All right. Um, great. So this is our agenda for today. It is purposefully light. Um, we will get you out of here um, actually pretty early. Uh, so uh, we'll begin uh, with our usual update uh, on our last discussion um, before uh, Emma, Natalie, and Michael will give an update from the um, last student subcommittee meeting. Um, after that, we'll then take a moment to kind of revisit the framework we discussed um, last time um, and changes we made in response to uh, those discussions. We'll take a moment to comment and discuss as a group before talking about how we begin the planning for action and what the next steps are uh, for the SAC. So uh, if you can believe it, um, we are at our last at least scheduled meeting uh, for this year, right near the end of the portion of our work focused on um, developing our recommendations. Uh, last time we were together, we reviewed and discussed a uh, proposed framework for our recommendations and kind of how the focus areas we developed could fit into that framework. Uh, the feedback that we took away from that discussion was general support for the framework, but I think some concerns about how to make the admittedly bit of an eye chart you see here in the top right hand corner uh, digestible uh, for our community. Uh, then we also heard comments about looking towards implementation, a continued need to educate our stakeholders and ourselves, reconsider what were the priority focus areas and ensure we are thinking about what it really will take to implement any of our recommendations. We'll dive into some thoughts about how we think about um, addressing these um, in a bit, uh, but first I want to hand it over to um, Emily, Natalie, and Michael for a quick um, update from the student subcommittee. I can go. Hi, everyone. Um, so the subcommittee met, gosh, it feels like a lifetime ago with finals out of the way. But we met a couple of weeks ago um, as our last meeting, and we just kind of discussed that chart that we've been discussing at the last meeting, and we'll go over this meeting. Um, and the first thing that I want to say is that we're all so grateful to this for this experience and we're extremely grateful to be a part of this process um, in helping shape a sustainable campus at UW-Madison. And then with that, we just wanna make sure that we're really utilizing our role and making sure our voices are heard in this process. So we have a couple of feedback um, that I wanted to go out to the whole group before we just before we start discussing more thoroughly. Um, so the first thing that we really wanted to point out is that we really like the organization of the chart. We think it's really comprehensive and easy to understand. So we really appreciate that it's laid out in that sense. Um, the second thing that I wanted to bring attention to is that sustainability is listed in almost every bullet point, but we don't have a, like a definition for sustainability. So for someone <laughs> looking outside in, I think we, we think it would be really helpful just to have a really like short little bullet point, you know, what does sustainability mean in this context? Um, then the last thing um, that we were a little confused on that I want to bring up as we discuss further today is the enabling section. There was some miscommunication on what that really meant. Are we, do they help support the priority? Are they a different subsection? Um, just like the, maybe the term enabling is a little confusing and we had a kind of quick discussion about what that meant and what that looks like for UW. Um, I think those are all the three points that I wanted to bring out, and then I will pass it off to either Michael or Emma to see if they want to add anything that I missed, but thank you. Yeah, I think just to follow up what uh, Natalie was saying, um, I super appreciate this experience. And I think the biggest you know, question or critique that we had was whether or not um, the enabling and supporting sections directly linked to that first section or if they were separate priorities. Um, and I think we as a group kind of discussed maybe actually switching the titles of supporting versus enabling because we felt like enabling was a more passive um, of like, we were not going to directly do anything, but we will, you know, in spirit support it. Um, sorry, there's trucks going by my house. Um, so that was, I think, the biggest adjustment that we suggested. Uh, I don't have anything to add on to that, but ditto the points that uh, uh, Natalie and Emma made. Awesome. Well, Thank you for fitting in all that work around your busy class schedules. And then again, for, for joining us here in the midst of the start of your summer. Um, the discussion that we have today is about how we've thought about kind of modifying and might address some of those issues by us switching to a slightly different format that might get to some of the sustainability definition questions and how we think about supporting enabling and what kind of the initiatives would be out there. So we can have that more comments or feedback on that later. 
All right, so let's get into how we got to some of those changes. Hold on, let me share my screen here. So, um, maybe stepping all the way back, um, if you can believe it, we've been working together now for over eight months. Um, and we set ourselves out with an ambitious task, right? We also knew that we were taking this on in the midst of, let's see, a global pandemic, um, a radical shift in how we all do work, um, a national refocusing on racial injustice, a presidential election, and probably countless other community or more personal disruptions. So I think above anything else um, for today's meeting, we just wanna say thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, thank you for, for sticking with us uh, and giving so freely of your time, putting in the effort uh, to be present uh, we did try to balance our asks of your time with wanting to build spaces for collaboration. Uh, we also attempted um, to find opportunities to inspire by bringing in those outside speakers uh, to the meetings and hopefully respond and react to the feedback uh, we received along the way. Uh, and even as we're all working on and responding to so many important issues, we think and we have heard from our stakeholders that uh, our work together is and will continue to be vital uh, to our community. So what have we done with our with our time together? Um, right, we we kicked off with guidance from our sponsors, Provost Schultz and the Time Vice Chancellor Heller, uh, as well as um, context from the importance of this work from Lieutenant Governor Barnes. We then developed uh, unifying values that guide some of our work together, and hopefully the implementation of the recommendations we put together. From there, we defined thirty focus areas interrogating each one as a group, followed by me bugging you all to fill out your prioritization, prioritization surveys. Uh, and across this process, we held uh, six virtual, virtual listening sessions to get um, and start some of the input and engagement uh, from our community. Uh, over these eight months, we hopefully learned a lot, both uh, from our stakeholders um, and from each other. And ideally, in some sense, we think this can be the, the first step for the culture change um, that we are recommending. But how do we go forward and build that momentum kind of outside of this group? So uh, last month, this is the framework um, that we discussed. Um, and after, after the meeting and the feedback we heard, we tried to step back and kind of based off what we heard, dig into the ideas behind these, what can be admittedly vague words um, to better think of a way to translate these recommendations for our campus community. So that got us to the draft recommendations that were shared um, earlier this week when we sent out the agenda, um, I think on Monday. What, you, what I'm showing here on the screen now is some excerpts from the kind of external website that we're building to better explain the recommendations, hopefully beyond the admittedly stale um, table that was shared um, earlier. Uh, the goal here is to take some of these terms and to better maybe describe a vision for each of these domains, right? So for culture, um, a vision to make sustainability principles a part of our day-to-day -day interactions, operations, and decision-making. For purpose, uh, elevate sustainability as a discipline, support collaborative research, and expand the learning opportunities. And for practice, you know, walk the talk with policies, procedures, and systems that build a sustainable university. And then instead of listing the priority focus areas that we define, we thought about how could we better define maybe the outcomes that these focus areas would lead to. Which um, in the area of our culture would lead to the priorities being to integrate sustainability, center social sustainability to support diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, and establish UW Madison as a leader in sustainability. That would then lead to some preliminary initiatives um, coming out of that um, that could help realize these priorities. Um, could be division sustainability scorecards, training, development of sustainability awards. As we look to our purpose, priorities um, came to us of you know, expand sustainability learning opportunities and collaborations, establish a distinctive home for sustainability research, education, and operations, and champion sustainability research leading to a preliminary initiative that could include supporting registered student organizations, uh, sustainability institute planning, and better research tracking. 
In our practice, the priorities are to plan and design for a sustainable and regenerative university, achieve carbon neutrality and zero waste, and build and operate a sustainable campus um, with initiatives that include could include the continuation of work um, uh, on the resilience commitment or something like a strategic energy management pilot. For the full recommendations that we send to leadership, we would document, uh, we will document these priorities and initiatives in uh, we'll call action plans. A quick snapshot uh, is what you see here. Um, we discussed this briefly last time, but we'd imagine these full documents would include an overview of the priority, potential members of a group um, that could see it through, uh, milestones, metrics, and also a more detailed list of those initiatives uh, beyond what was shown previously and the expected resources needed for the success. Our plan is to dig into the details of these action plans with you um, during the one-on-one -on -one meetings um, that we're working to schedule here over the next few weeks. So now I've reached out to you all and have meetings scheduled with a good chunk of you um, right now. But let me pause um, for a second. I just threw a lot at you. <laughs> um, hopefully you've had a chance um, to at least see the, um, this kind of stale-ish table, um, but at least it's all here in front of you right now. And uh, open it up right now for comments, questions, feedback, concerns, um, anything you wanna, wanna bring up as we're starting to better frame out these recommendations. Also open it up to my team if people have other, other things to, to pull out or anything that I missed. I'll just say, Alex, I really appreciate you kind of taking us back and walking us back through our journey. Um, and in doing that, just congratulations to you and your team for taking all of the discussions and feedback you heard and being able to synthesize and distill it into what seemed to be very clear and actionable items. So well, so well done. It's great to see Great to see thoughts and, and people's priorities put down in this succinct way. Um, I did appreciate what Natalie said about still working on a, defi a working definition, an elevator pitch um, of sustainability as an underpinning to advancing on, on these strategies and tactics. I think that will be a really key piece of next steps. Definitely. Any other thoughts, questions, feel free to throw it in the chat or um, bring anything else out. Um, I said at the top, we've got a pretty light agenda. So after this, we're gonna kind of talk through where to go next um, and then send you on your way for the day. So this is the chance if you had anything else you wanna impart with the full group. Well, if you're looking for feedback on whether this all makes sense and am I supportive of the approach you've taken since the last time we met, the answer would be yes. So I don't know if you're waiting for people to respond and say, <laughs> it all looks good. It makes sense to me. Um, I'm uh, much more looking forward to uh, the meeting I have on my calendar now because uh, it sounds like I'm going to hear about a lot of to-do items or things that we're going <laughs> to be working on together, which is great. So um so it sounds to me like some of that detail we'll discover more in these one-on-one -on -one meetings, but uh, so, so thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll keep chugging along then. Um, thank you for, for that feedback and, and Mark, you're, you're spot on. Um, we do envision these one-on-one -on -one meetings, focusing in on those kind of action items that, and action plans that align with your specific kind of domains on campus and digging into some of those details and making sure we're thinking about the right things, considering all the right components in there. So on that, how do we start preparing for action? Um, I think when we talk about building action plans and groups um, under each under each priority, um, we acknowledge that kind of some of these make sense to come first. Um, those could be shown here. I think the main goal is to kind of start to show how we believe going forward, the SAC can act as the accountability body 
four action groups that come out of this work, while also um, acknowledging champions uh, as we have successes and helping to remove barriers as, as we come across them. We envision the kind of the, the Office of Sustainability still being in that facilitator role um, with the action groups, ensuring consistency, identifying opportunities for collaboration, bringing barriers up to the, to the council um, in that sense. We also know we can't be successful um, if we do this in a vacuum and that these recommendations and the action groups uh, should be supported and developed in the, context, in the context of existing sustainability programs we have on campus, uh, other university planning, as well as community planning efforts. So as you think about that bubbly org chart, you wanna layer on these other, other things and us understand how it fits into that, that larger context. But looking ahead to the, the summer and fall, we imagine kind of the first few um, action groups thinking about kicking off with the main goal of getting further eyes to review and refine um, those action plans as we actually move to, to implementation. Any pause for clarifying questions on uh, at this point? Cool. Well, the last thing we wanted to chat about was, um, and really just kind of next steps. And I think before I get into the, the nitty gritty uh, of what that looks like, which you've already sort of previewed, thought, we thought it was worth that we kind of just take a pause and recognize the importance of our moment right now. So the work of this council, as well as kind of the support of the university for other sustainability programs and all the great work um, around campus overlap with the moment in time that we think, you know, there's federal policy supporting a need for an equitable and clean economy. Uh, state politics are admittedly mixed, um, but we do have some new leaders coming to the Board of Regents and we are rapidly approaching a, a fall when many, if not all of the campus units are gonna be setting new work norms. Uh, so I think we're really on fertile ground for change at the moment. Uh, but that means we gotta do the work. So um, specifically as it pertains to our recommendations, our goal is to get the, the final report um, off to leadership this summer. So between now and then we'll um, have our one-on-one -on -one meetings to dive into the, the, some of the details of the action plan, firm up language from there and share a version of kind of this written report for everyone um, on the council to review and edit before we ultimately deliver and present this back to our, our sponsors. Um, ideally, we do that all as a group, as a chance to better kind of um, acknowledge and champion all of our, our great work. And if we, we stick to our schedule, that would set us up for a, a rollout um, in conjunction with, with the fall. After that, we'd imagine that this group maybe shifts to something like a semester, once a semester cadence. Um, perhaps even in person at one point, if you can imagine it, um, where we'll focus on progress updates and any support needed uh, from the action groups as they're doing the work. Um, we are clearly at kind of a, approaching a milestone for, for our work with the council. So we would appreciate any feedback on our, our process to date and progress going forward. Um, we'll reserve you know, at least five minutes or so during the one-on-one -on -one discussions um, if people have specific feedback to provide then, or if you have other thoughts or feedback at any time, please uh, feel free to reach out. Um, but before I let you all go to enjoy this uh, beautiful spring-like day, um, Deb was gonna lead us through at least one last whip around um, with, with the full group. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, and, and I just would like to add my thanks uh, and my appreciation both to all of you and to the Office of Sustainability. It has been a joy working with all of you on this project. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, so, you know, we talked a lot about how there's going to be change, and one of our big buckets is culture change. So our question for you is, since we were talking about integrating sustainability as one of our priorities, how could you take what you learned here through these meetings back to your teams to help start that integration and culture change process? So we know leaders go first, and you guys are leaders. So take a second to think about that, and we'll just, you know, I'll just, I'm, I'm not going to call on anybody because I'm. you do have, need a minute to think about this question and I can read it again if people would prefer. 
is it pop can you put it in chat so we can see it can you oh you want me to type in front of all of you okay nola well you don't have <laughs> if you could say it again just, just no just. I, I i'll put it in chat so that you can all i'm teasing i am not very good type though. so no. I can offer something now because I something came up for me. I, I have to say, in looking at this year in review and what we've covered, and I'm so grateful for the structure that was used um, uh, throughout this journey and being able to see it, revisit it each meeting has been really helpful for me to know that we are staying on track and where we are in the universe um, of this, this process. Um, I really feel much more grounded and confident in my ability to share the learning and our developmental journey with others. I feel so much more because it was consistent. It wasn't overwhelming. Um, it was digestible. We were able to see what we've talked about because of the consistencies in the documentation, the notes, that reinforcement. Um, that that care that was given really it just built up the momentum and what I was learning it just stacked on top of each other as opposed to throwing it all and trying to remember it um, and and so I really feel a sense of shared accomplishment um, I feel and can look back and see my um, growth and learning over the course of of the year and when that happens, that's when I start thinking of questions, right? That's why I had so many questions like, wait a second, because I started to digest and, and you know, and simmer uh, with what we had been given. And so I, this has been one of the best experiences I've ever had in an advisor group because of oh, the nice. care, the structure, um, the different perspectives, people representing different offices, and just the overall experience um, has been, um, I would say in honor of our presence and in turn, it's been an honor to be a part of this shared community. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the team, I'm going to say thank you. Yeah. It's very yeah. nice of you to say. So I feel comfortable. You say, no, look, go talk to this group. I really do feel comfortable. I feel comfortable with saying, you know what? Good question. We don't know. You know, I feel comfortable <laughs> with saying that, that it's, not, it's not just me. It's reasonable to have yeah. uh, uncertainty. It's there's other factors that impact things. And I feel much more, um, able to say that, but feel very good that I know where to go for support and resources. So yeah, that's great to know. Yes, this is complexity, right? We are in complexity. And when you're in complexity, there's lots of uncertainty. So being able to have that generous space with each other is really important. So thank you for noticing that. Other thoughts, so I, folks? I want to echo um, what Nola uh, said near the end about uh, the um, quality and the integrity of this process. And uh, I think I've mentioned this to Missy and Alex along the way, I've just been blown away at how they've used us as a board. So I, um, I've learned a lot from that, separate from the sustainability uh, stuff that we learned. So, um, so thank you. Uh, but I was thinking, uh, actually, I didn't know this was going to be the prompt question, but I what was starting to spin in my head as we were doing this wrap was, what am I going to do to be an advocate to like share what, right? So um, cause I have different, uh, I could go to the student affairs cabinet. I can go to the student affairs council. I can go to union council. I can go to my leadership team, but I need like, uh, five or six sets of uh, a slide deck, right. Uh, to like go around and do that. So, um, so I don't know if everybody else in the council is willing to do that, but that would help me. And I'd be willing to start, uh, spreading the word as far as culture change and to be yeah. part of the advocacy group. So, um, I don't know if that's now or that's kind of uh, like maybe it's based on the uh, final set of recommendations after you get sign off from the provost. I don't know when the right time for that is, but I'm willing to do that and uh, work that into my shtick uh, when I'm talking to all the groups I talk to. Right. So, so yeah, that's great, Mark, and a great idea about you know needing a resource to help you with that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm fairly confident they can put that together. I see people writing things down. <laughs> Who else has something they'd like to share that they're going to do? Go ahead, Chris. Um, thanks, Deb. I, I would just echo the comments that have been made, um, both in terms of how far we've gotten, but also in, in the management of the project. Um, I've learned uh, about both along the way, and, and I've picked up um, 
bits and pieces that'll be useful uh, in the future on, on both those things. So uh, kudos to, to this team. Um, you know, we are in athletics, um, you know, it's a pretty exciting time here and, and um, we're bracing for change ourselves. Um, there'll be, you know, leadership that will emerge that will um, be charged with um, making this a priority. I think one interesting thing is, you know, the university or the universe, the universe has conspired uh, coincidentally. And, um, you know, we've got, a, a, since this project has started, we've got a group of student athletes who have put together um, their own internal group here who have, who have um, expressed their desire to make progress in the, in the, in the realm of sustainability and, and um, represent both uh, an opportunity and a, an additional layer of accountability uh, for us. So I, I see it becoming a collaborative um, effort uh, over here and um, not one that's just limited to our staff, um, but it, it could be pretty cool, uh, pretty cool opportunity and um, we're excited about it. So um, I've been sharing with our, with our team, our senior, senior leadership team and, and our department heads along the way of kind of how we've been progressing. And um, so we'll hit the ground running here. I'm looking forward to the one-on-one -on -one that I think we have scheduled in, in two weeks. So uh, I, I think uh, Noah made reference to it. You know, um, I really appreciate the lack of judgment on, uh, you know, when I don't have an answer or, um, or even a direction. And I kind of said from the beginning, you know, from the very first meeting, you know, you have to bring me along. I, I'm eager to help, um, but I just don't know how. And I feel like uh, yeah. the Office of Sustainability has helped me uh, in that realm. So thank you for that. Nice, nice, good, good to know. Who else Who wants to go next? I'm still processing, um, but uh, my colleagues have already cl clearly articulated how much we appreciated the way um, you have managed and designed this process and engaged every thought, not excluding anyone from whatever point they were um, that uh, could value just uh, diverse or different ideas um, and opinions. So I appreciate that and um, really support that um, inclusive work and that inclusive process uh, that's completely synergistic with uh, the efforts and the type of culture we're trying to create on campus. So all that you're doing is aligned uh, with the goals and the mission of the diversity office and the diversity officer. So uh, thank you in general. I think that uh, from my seat, uh, the work that we're build, building here is completely in alignment with our um, diversity statement our values and the way we're trying to create a campus um, culture um, th that is inclusive and thoughtful about uh, the lives of the people here and the planet in which we exist. And um, so I see complete synergy in thinking about and building nice. um, in de &I work that is inclusive of um, sustainability. Uh, but secondly, I just wanna throw this out there. One of our priorities is um, in the division right now is generating, uh, what is it, cultivating the next generation of leaders. And one of the things I got to see through this um, process is the high level of engagement from students and their capacity to lead um, in ways that are just so, so thoughtful and so timely and so current and present um, to how we engage our community. Um, and, and I think, this culture shift we're about to move into, continuing to be a champion for uh, leadership capacity and engaging students and voices in the community um, is where I'll be a, a major champion in this effort. Um, so I think yeah. your partnership, don't, don't forget that the alignment is there and we're always um, willing participants to build our messages so that sustainability is a part of our work in DE&I. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. And you're right, right? Our students are amazing. It's just, <laughs> we really, yeah. not just the students on this committee. I mean, yeah, generally, our students are amazing, right? So thank you for pointing that out. 
We've been watching that all all year, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay, who else? Got a couple people left. Go ahead, Sarah. Looks like you're ready. I'm looking forward to, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to having um, some members of the office come and speak with my leadership council next month and Mm -hmm. uh, update, share an overview of the work. And then um, from that external view, you know, me discussing with the council how we want to form a work group and and get active in this space on, on behalf of campus, mostly probably in education and awareness and thinking about how we can help support campus and priorities. And now that there's a bit more of the, the draft framework, being able to share it internally with our leadership and figuring out how we intersect with the overall campus efforts and where where the space is where we can best inform and, and play a part in supporting. And I echo what everybody else has said about the great process and the great experience. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have the great students left. I can go. Um, I think something that I learned and something I will take with me from this process is just the really clear breakdown of the different um, like strategic areas. Um, because I think as students, sometimes when we're talking to campus leadership or um, trying to implement changes, sustainability feels like such a big concept, like you have to overhaul everything. And so I think having a clearer framework of the different specific areas, you, do, you might not be in charge of facilities operations, but you are in charge of strategic planning or something like that here is how you can affect those individual areas. I think that's a skill that will really help um, throughout the rest of my time at UW. Thanks, Emma. Natalie or Michael, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I can go. Um, Something that I'm going to be doing as reflecting before we start up again is just kind of trying to, how can I expand the student voices here? Like, how can I make sure that we're getting, you know, I play a lot of different hats, you know, on campus, so does Emma and Michael, but we're still missing a large part of the student body. So how can I use my role to expand our narrative and how to get them included in this discussion? So that's something that I'm gonna be working on over the summer is just kind of generating some ideas and how we can ex- keep expanding and pushing this narrative to have every single voice included in this process. Thanks, Natalie. And Michael, I know that you're leaving us. Uh, if you have any last words you'd like to share though, we'd be excited to hear them. Yeah, I mean, kind of echoing what Natalie was saying, I think um, after this, it's just continuing the conversation trying to get more students to be a part of the conversation, trying to get voices who um, historically aren't represented in these conversations, going to them, reaching out, trying to get them apart and engage in all of these different levels. One on this administrative level that I've been um, so lucky to be involved in and put input on, but also on the ground of putting these systems in place and getting these things done. Um, Just getting students to be a part of all of that process I think those are kind of my next step. Thank you. And best to you as you move on with your next, the next phase of your journey. Alex, I'm going to turn it back to you. Well, thank you all. That was a, a, a lovely way to end our, our time together here. Um, but that that's really it. Um, I do um, would still ask for addresses where we could drop off some gifts for folks. I know a few people have sent me that. Um, others have not. And for those who have sent me addresses, I haven't dropped off the gift yet. So sorry, we'll get to that soon. Uh, but as our first pre-gift, we'll give you about 50 minutes back in your day here um, to go and enjoy um, the beautiful weather. Pretend like you're in a meeting and go for a walk or something. Protect the time. Please enjoy it. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Have a great summer. <laughs>